Many duelists know that the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game started with the Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon, but where did the first meta strategy come from? The Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon was released on March 8, 2002, following the explosive success of the anime that aired its first episode on September 29, 2001. This set released the first 126 cards into the card pool, however, the game was still in its earliest stages and was pretty much casual. Future meta staples were released in the set such as Raigeki, Monster Reborn, and Pot of Greed, but were hard for most players to get a hold of so soon into the game. This was a short lawless era of the game where no one really understood how the game worked at a competitive level, but everyone was playing it as it took the world by storm. Only three weeks later we saw the release of Starter Deck's Yugi and Starter Deck Kaiba, arguably one of the more important sets of the early game for new players. The Starter Decks had not only a rulebook for the game, but came with something equally as important, knowledge of stats. Brace yourself. For my battle ox. Up until this point, most monsters from Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon had awful stats. With the exception of Blue Eyes himself and a select few, the rest of the monsters were all over the place and we kind of just threw what we had in the decks. With Starter Decks Yugi and Kaiba, players started to min-max cards and play three of as many as they could get their hands on. Any level 4 monster with 17 to 1800 was really good and anything below just wasn't worth it. Starter Deck Yugi gave us Neo the Magic Swordsman, and Kaiba gave us Battle Ox, and more importantly, Lejeune. Lejeune was the only level 4 monster to exist at this time with 1800 attack, which meant if you were the only one to control Lejeune, no other monster level 4 or lower could match it except another copy of itself. Having Lejeune would help secure your position so that you could tribute it for higher level monsters. Now this isn't to say players wouldn't play defensively. Spirit of the Harp and Giant Soldier of Stone would be played in defense mode because of their 2000 defense stat, but aggressive style of play was more common. Lejin could also be destroyed by magic cards like the previously mentioned Raigeki, but again, most foil cards were hard to obtain from most players. So for the most part, if you had a Lejin, you were probably okay. However, few in number, there were effect monsters who could deal with fields. You ignorant mortals. It's far from all over. We have barely even begun to play. Now I'll teach you the true meaning of fear as I summon the man-eater bug. There were effect monsters in the early game. However, very few were actually useful. Wall of Illusion and Man-eater bug were by no exaggeration the most powerful effect monsters at this point. Man-eater bug being able to upon flip destroy any monster on the field could deal with any threat be it a Lejeune or Blue Eyes. But Wall of Illusion was arguably better because of its defensive play. Having 1850 defense meant no level 4 or lower monster at this time could remove it by battle, so you would be forced to either use a magic card on it or attack into it with a tribute summon monster. This is a good stall strategy to get your own high level monsters out or just keep it on the field forcing your opponent to deal with it. This type of deck building started forming a more structured deck with a healthy balance of high level and low level monsters, magic cards, and trap cards. This opened the door to the first early game strategy, Beatdown. Now Beatdown would very quickly split into two, Dragon Rush and Beatdown Toolbox. Dragon Rush would try and summon Blue Eyes White Dragon as he was the most powerful monster in the game with a whopping 3000 attack to overwhelm the field. The most common way duelists would attempt this would be with the Lord of D and the Flute of Summoning Dragons, which released and started at Kaiba. Beatdown, however, focused on summoning a monster who took one less tribute, Summon Skull. Vulnerable to a physical assault. <sighs> Summon Skull! Attack! Summon Skull was stronger than any other one tribute monster and stronger than most two tribute monsters with its huge 2500 attack. While Summon Skull couldn't stand up to a Blue Eyes White Dragon, it could destroy any monster the opponent summoned to stop Blue Eyes from coming out. Many variants of the two decks would see play, but it was clear that Summon Skull beatdown was the way to go. As more sets released, the two decks would see some change with how they were constructed. On June 26 of 2002, Metal Raiders would release, bringing it with 144 cards into the card pool. In these 144 cards, one reigned supreme, Mirror Force. Mirror Force was immediately a staple, and like staples before it, any deck running it was better for it. Blue Eyes and Summon Skull now faced a threat from attempting to attack that could wipe the opponent's board clean of attack position monsters. There were other traps heavily used in this set, for example Magic Jammer and Seven Tools of the Bandit, as Metal Raiders introduced the idea of negation into the game. Witch of the Black Forest and Sangan released in this set as well, which would eventually find their way into the deck that won the first world championship, Hand Control. But Hand Control would not come into being until a few sets later, so they would see experimentation in many decks until then. Most notably Witch of the Black Forest, as she could add Summon Skull directly to the hand. Also debuting in the set would be Seven Colored Fish and Dark Elf. Seven Colored Fish was another vanilla 1800 monster who could replace Neo the Magic Swordsman or Battle Ox and Dark Elf could replace Giant Soldier of Stone or Spirit of the Harp because its 2k stat was an attack rather than defense. 
Now there are many cards I did not mention in this video that did affect the metagame and were seeing play, just one example is Heavy Storm. However, for the sake of this video, it did not change the meta from being centered around Beatdown, so we didn't get into those cards heavily in this video. For the early game, Beatdown would dominate the competitive scene, being played at every card shop and every playground that had competitive play. Many duelists would still play random pile decks of any cards we could get, myself included, but for the duelists who had the resources to acquire the means to construct Beatdown or Dragon Rush, they participated in the earliest Yu-Gi-Oh! metagame. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing and dropping a like as it helps me out tremendously. I upload Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this every Sunday, so stay tuned for more. I also livestream Monday through Friday live Let's Play series at 11pm Eastern Standard Time. Stop by sometime if you're interested in saying hi and hanging out. Until next time, duelists.